Hello everyone, Kiri FDA, welcome to another GT Sport video, and I hope this FIA GT Sport video is going to make you feel good about Gran Turismo Sport. That's what I hope. 274 points up for grabs. But here you go, the hashtag ban PGM movement is in full force. It's happening, ladies and gentlemen. Even Grigo DM, the Greek driver who I've had some strong racing with in the past, is on board. So if you haven't seen my video about PG Motorsport and what he does in FIA, essentially ruins other people's races for his YouTube channel, then uh, do go check that out. I'll put a link in the description below. Feel free to share it if you so wish. I'm, I'm very happy that it's getting attraction. And uh, a lot of people in this race today, actually, in this video, we were in PG Motorsports FIA a few days ago and we had our races ruined. So nice bit of poetry there. Anyway, just got the qualifying highlights up as I kind of ramble on. We did a 121.5. That was good enough for the top six. You can see the quality time so close, excluding the uh, leader there, 70 fast. But the rest of us were in about second. We'll zoom through the FIA intro. No one will see that again. Here we are in the Lint liveried Lexus. And we're going to kick off here at the combo. So let me tell you more about the combo today. FIA, 17 laps, Red Bull Ring, Group 2 cars, times 10 tyre wear, extremely high tyre wear. Um, if the pit loss wasn't so high, it would definitely be a one-stop. Some people may still try and do the one-stop, but I imagine most people are just going to suffer on the no-stop. So good in the lobby earlier that a lot of people were friendly, you know, sharing comments. That always has a feel-good feeling about it, and you feel like people are going to be fair. Um, you can see here, I think I kept traction control on for the first couple of corners. That's my tip in these um, races where you're in cars where the fuel is heavy at the beginning, the tyres are cold, and you're on a hard compound. Um, that kind of combination leads me to use TC for the first few corners, and I often see people spinning. You can see the field behind is already quite stretched out, so I imagine a few people have spun already somewhere. But it's not again right here behind the Austrian driver, NLR Mayhem. And we've got a couple of poles ahead of him, including Sivistu, who was someone I sat behind in quali and um, kind of pulled me along to a decent quality time. And we've got CLA Jax behind, and then Grigo DM. So a lot of drivers I, I recognise here. It looks like uh, Grigo's already got himself a penalty. Grigo by name, Grigo by nature. And this race is really going to come down to um, conserving tyres and kind of not wasting time battling too much but if you do battle make it count so be decisive don't just battle like lap after lap because you will shred your tires i'm in the lexus rcf here which is not the fastest group two most other people are in the um nissan um gtr group two someone's gonna have a little silly jacks thinks about it doesn't goes back to the inside um which is pretty smart. We're all kind of working together right now. The leader here absolutely blitz quality, sent it too fast. He's already, you can see from the radar on the top right, or the track map, I should say, he's extended a gap. So whether he's gone for a medium um, strategy, so we'll go on the mediums and then he will stop, I don't know. Or he might just be that rapid, we'll find out. He's already almost out of shot. And uh, we're kind of just about keeping in the slip of NLR Mayhem. These Group 2 cars can be a bit sensitive to dirty air. So the middle set here isn't always that pleasant when you're behind someone. But um, yeah, this race is going to be a smart one, a tactical one, where if you play your card right, you can you can kind of be OP at the end. We can see Cervevas, who's been doing very well in the daily races, top split daily races recently. Um, and also the Kirith Kart community races recently, I have to say. He's winning a lot at special stage. He's moving on up the order. I'm very happy with my qualifying position here. You can see that just about staying with this top group. Well, we are out of slip now. Probably need quite a good exit here from T1. Let's see what we do. Will we go down second or keep it in third? No, we'll go down second. Go okay, all of that bump. I say I'm worried about getting a track limit there. CLA Jazz has a track limit behind. Okay. And that's the other ingredient of this race, is, as always at Red Bull Ring, is track limits. Both at turn one, but also the uh, the last two corners are very, very, very tricky with track limits. Very tricky with track limits. Especially in the group two cars. We're in a good position right now, as long as we can kind of keep it clean. If someone in the group ahead gets a penalty, they'll kind of come back and help us bridge that split screen. If um, second, third and fourth are going to fight, then uh, this pack will come back to us fairly, fairly quickly. Unless the poles are going to work together to um, 
Captain Norwegian. I got uh, Norway and Denmark mixed up in the previous video and I cost me heat for that. So I do apologise if I've got that wrong again. I do believe that is um, Norway. And yeah, it's settling in now. So we're about to go for lap four. The, you know, the laps really do tick, but the tyre wear is just so brutal. It's almost like you can imagine if you if you have a spin in this race, it's like you're spinning ten times. Because you have ten times tyre wear. That's the damage that's being done. And I am trying to be as smooth as possible and definitely not get a track limit penalty. So P5 ahead has extended the lead. But I'm not too concerned about this stage because the race will ebb and flow. And I am trying to be very, very smooth. CLA Jacks has taken their penalty. And um, it's now going to... Ah, there we go. There's a penalty ahead. So this could be exactly what we talked about in terms of someone dropping back and just helping us bridge that slipstream. So it's going to be one of the Polish drivers. Let's see what happens. Do you struggle in this corner in the RCF? Just struggle to kind of lay down the power. So let's see what happens. Is the Austrian going to be able to get through? Not sure. Doesn't look like it. Okay, fine. But if they have a little bit of a scoreboard, they'll come back to us. And in fact, I think we are just about almost in the slip again. I was getting kind of a little bit better at these next two left-handers. They've always been the bane of my existence at the Red Bull Ring. Um, as we do miss the apex there. But I'm getting a little bit better. Let's see how we do on this left-hand one here. Go down to second and go... Oh, big bit of swaz as I am as I get the power down. No need to go down to second really if you get the right lines. He's in third. Something must have kicked off behind because CLA Jacks has dropped off. Oh, he had the, I may have had a penalty actually that I've forgotten about. And yeah, going very smooth at the moment. We're in the Lexus, which like I said, is not the fastest car, but it is... Um, a little bit better on its tyres. So we're in a really nice position here. Senna too fast to set a lap time a second quicker than mine. So either they're on the medium tyre and they're going for kind of a YOLO strategy or they're just exceedingly rapid. Probably the latter. As uh, this Polish driver is going to have another penalty. So not quite in the rhythm. They've uh, picked up a couple now and this time they should really fall behind the Austrian. In fact, we might even be able to have a pop, depending on the run we get out of turn two. Apologies. Let's see. I think about going up the inside, but then it's not really the right time to do it. It's just going to field back in. If I was to dive up the inside there, we'd just both lose a lot of time, possibly lose um, contact with the pack ahead and uh, fall into the clutches of the pack behind, where you definitely don't want to be in these sort of races. I don't know if you've noticed, let me know in the comments, but in these kind of FYA races, in my splits anyway, you usually have a, a pack at the front, um, up to about fifth or sixth, and then you have a big, big midfield pack that can be, I don't know, seventh, eighth, all the way up to like 15th, and then you have some strikes up the bat. So you don't want to be in that midfield pack because once you start losing positions there, a trickle can become a flood. So um, let's just try and keep it up here. That was pretty marginal there. I'm playing fast and loose with the track limits in that last corner, which is a pretty stupid game to play. Let's see if it bites us during the course of this race. Down second gear again, so again, I'm not really hooking up um, turn one. Should be fairly easy in third when you've got your lines correct. As we are nice in the slippery now of P5, ranked number 20 in this lobby, not a name I recognise. As we both go purple and have a red sector. So explain that, aliens. I'm now thoroughly confused. Um, but the race is bubbling nicely. On lap 6 out of 17. And we're doing pretty well at the moment. Potentially still in the hunt for, I'd say, even even a P2. Because the tyre weight is going to kick in and it's going to kick in hard. You can see below there is now already meaningful tyre wear on these hard tyres. And we're only on lap 6. So we've got laps to go. It's only going to get worse. Let's be wearing fairly evenly between uh, front and back. Although it's very concentrated on the left side, as you might expect, expect even, from a uh, clockwise circuit. These type of corners putting a lot of strain on the outside tights. Just trying to barrel in here, get a good exit as we... Ooh! I'm taking a lot of that curb. And yeah, I remember at the time thinking... Oh, hang on, I might have taken a bit too much. Okay, so race critical moment. You know, at this moment in time, if you ignore the penalty, we're looking really, really good in P6. 
kind of just hanging with P5, he seems to be catching P4. But now we've got this penalty and uh, a real danger of falling into that midfield pack behind. So really not what we wanted. Pretty stupid mistake, but there we go, we've made it. Got to try and decide what gear to put out of the penalty in. Decided to go down second, immediately rev out, so that was probably not the right choice as well. Compounding my error, which is something they talk about in sports science, you should compound your errors. Um, but we haven't lost position anyway. We've brought a CLA Jats back in, uh, into the slip range, and he's going to bring Rigo with him. They come as a pair. But um, CLA Jats may have caught us anyway, we don't know. And we weren't really that... Um, like dominantly in the slip of uh, the police driver ahead so not a huge 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 consequence there um, that there could have been perhaps as we're going to go over it's already going to be lap 8 when we go over the line as we rack up the laps and uh, I say even at this stage you can start to notice the tyre wear sort of a funny sensation because the car is getting lighter which means you can brake later into the big braking zones like turn 1 and turn 2 but when you go through the corners where the medium speed corners that's where you kind of notice the, the lack of tire grip as we continue to keep it in second there so that's not going to be the optimal exit and you can see CLA Jats behind is now enemy at the gates within the seven tenths and uh, we'll be closing rapidly at pace we'll also make it difficult for them going into this braking zone because they'll be hitting it faster so it's easier to overshoot it um, and all I can really hope for now is to just make progress into the Polish driver ahead because there is a train of cars stacking up behind and they all want my lunch. And they all would quite dearly like this P6 that we have at the moment that I think would be plus 200 points. And um, I'm never disappointed getting plus 200 points. That is a big haul of points for me. Pretty decent line that time around left-hander, I thought. Let's see about the second one here. Keeping in third, ooh, fairly laborious actually. And CLA Jats will have a good run. I think I was okay on this corner, the penultimate corner, when I was getting over the grass. But you kind of get close there, you can really shortcut a lot of it. And then the last corner, all you want to do is avoid a penalty, which we've done. Nice. Top marks. And uh, we're dropping CLA Jats a little bit. So we can just add on that with a good exit from turn one. We might break the slip of the cars behind and stop. We don't. That's a very bad exit. Really delayed on the throttle, and that's going to bring CLA Jats back in. So, like I often talk about in my streams, these kind of races at this level, they can, they all come down to very small margins in particular moments. So often a tenth, um, either way at a particular point in the race, just changes the whole complexion of the race in terms of getting slip of a car ahead or um, dropping it from a car behind. But yeah, Sealy Jats is definitely, definitely hanging with us. Although maybe he's struggling in the dirty air in this kind of middle sector. They don't seem to close up too much through these corners. It's mainly on the straight, which does make sense in these Group 2 cars. And uh, I would say we're still kind of loitering nicely. Behind P5, P4, we can see P3 there as well. P1 has just gone. Absolutely rapid, so... P1 is probably off the table. The best we could do, theoretically, is a P2. He's also making a move for it. We're going to come around, come around again. It's going to be lap 10. The laps are going fast. As we get a little bit out of shape and get on the power early and ooh, just bring it back in. I'm not liking the way I'm attacking that last corner. Spin. It's a little bit too risky. I'm not really hooked up there. Likewise for turn one. And this is part of the thing about the tyres. It's just... It's different every lap. It's very, very, very tricky. And this was a bit of a controversial FIA combo because um, lots of tyre wear, quite punishing. Um, not an awful lot of strategy because the one-stop isn't especially viable with the with the longer pit times. Which does make me think, why why don't they um, kind of have bespoke pit times in FIA so they could kind of craft strategies? Just test them and you know, make something where you have a one-stop, a two-stop, even a three-stop viable, that would be awesome. Maybe we'll see that in GT7, I hope. As uh, we're still kind of holding off Sealer Jats, a bit of a moment in the race where I've just got to drive smoothly and uh, not tear up my tyres, and it will pay dividends at the end of the race, I can assure you. You see the lap times dropped off. 
Um, I suspect 23s are still very, very much possible. If we can go out together. See the Jack's not able to close up to that middle sector, so it looks like the Dirty Air is affecting them. A bit important for us to get a um, good exit here onto the home straight. So that's actually one of the shorter straights on the circuit, I think. And we went very wide there, which concerns me. And, oh dear. We've got another track limit penalty. The act, is that a thing you don't want to do at the Red Bull Ring? And normally I, I tend to, I know when I'm streaming here, I tend to avoid getting penalties. But um, the combination of the tyre wear and everything is uh, is catching me out. So it's a poor mistake. What's CJ Jacks going to do? Looks like he's just going to sit behind because I've got a penalty. Which is sensible. He does almost get dive from Grigo. Yeah, it tries to be a bit opportunistic. We won't go down second this time. We learnt our lesson. We just go down to third. And uh, Grigo really dropped off there. I don't know what happened. Did he have a penalty as well or something? I don't know. But um, he really dropped off. And as a result, we're just going to hang in here. And uh, nowhere for Grigo to go really round the outside. Didn't quite have the pace. And we're still in the slip of CLA Jacks. So, well, kind of, again, not as bad as it could have been. We haven't really dropped off into into the um, meat of the pack. We just lost a position and we're still hanging with that person that we lost the position to. In fact, if you look at the radar, there's a big midfield group that are now quite a few seconds off this uh, battle for six, let's call it. So I think this is battle... And maybe 6 or 10 and it looks like 11 till 17 or something um, are quite a way off so maybe they've just battered themselves to smithereens we did work quite sensibly at the beginning minimal tyre um, wear incurred can we sort out turn 1 we haven't got a penalty so far in the penultimate corner and the last corner and now this corner so we've kind of righted the ship a little bit which is important to do mentally and we're now going to start to head into the end game of this race where things get very very tense and very very difficult so keep taking a look at the tyre wear indicators on the bottom left that is now significant very difficult and uh, the curves at the red bull ring just feel very very slippy very very slippy curves um, a great example is the exit curve here at um, turn three because ideally you want to be on this exit curve accelerating this one and um, but I tend to avoid it at this stage of the race because it just feels so slippery and as soon as you put the power down there the back end wants to come around and um, not too much to worry about here you can get some swaz but it's easy manageable same for this corner if you kind of want to straight line it you can get some swaz um, just talk you through these uh, the rest of these corners as well penultimate corner is, is fairly straightforward you just don't want to run too wide but you can avoid that by trying to cut a lot of the grass on the inside and this corner is coming very, very tricky. Track limits, um, trying to get your aim right. And then when you get on the power on that exit curve, again, it does want to spit the car around. So really something to be aware of and um, don't just dump the throttle when you get on that curve. Likewise here, by the way, if you exit this curve and you're riding this sausage, so you, you mentally you feel like, yeah, I'm okay for track limits because I'm not, I haven't got my right-hand side wheels over, so I'm not going to get pinged for track limit. And I feel like that can sometimes lull you into false sense of security, so you do dump the throttle. But if you dump the throttle when you're riding that sausage, ooh, the car does not like it. Very, very easy spin. Speak of the devil, Savistu, I think, has spun here. Um, are we going to be gifted a position or not? He looks like he's in the Lexus as well. All gold. No, we're not. But it's now definitely a... Um, well, I think it's a five-way battle. Quite an, it's going to be quite an intense five-way battle for fifth. Yeah, there we go, five cars in this one, and it is a uh, battle worth fighting for as we look to potentially go around the outside here. Quite a bold move, um, but not going to be able to get it done, so we're just going to try and slot inside and not lose another position. Here comes Surveyor, that's a little bit rude, but I can't really complain, I would have definitely done the same there, um, being a bit optimistic. And uh, potentially losing a position as well to Grigo now, in fact we'll probably have to let him go, but that is going to be it, no more. I say no to the Russian. That's enough people overtaking me for one lap. I have a rule on that. As uh, Gruger gets a huge amount of swaz, and actually is kind of fed to the Russian as bait, which is good news for us. So position shopping and changing now, and it's no coincidence as the tyres wear off, stranger things happen. Um, are we going to keep this Avevas down the straight in the slip? Yes, we are, just about. And those two behind are going to fight. Always uh, be a bit concerned 
when people behind you are fighting at this range, at this track, at this corner, just be aware of the dive bomb. That could be a bit unintentional. If one of them tries to overtake the other, they can meet with the apex. I've done it myself, actually, trying to overtake someone there. And uh, fifth place, CLA Jack slightly getting away. See, my last lap was very, very slow. It was actually slower than the lap that I took the penalty on. Shows you how much time I lost battling and, and stuff like that. It's going to be lap 15 when we go over the line. There's only going to be three laps to go. I don't know if this one is going quickly for you as well, but it's kind of... The pace is just really, really intense. The tyres now are absolutely horrific to drive on. Just have a look at the small movements of all the cars, like the Italian ahead. Just the side to side as, as people get on the power. And also applying the brakes and getting off the brakes as well. The tyres don't really have a lot to give in terms of the left-hand side. Um, so you can see a lot of people making corrections and all those corrections are going to be costing time. Whilst we still don't want to get a trap limit penalty, you'll give that um, curb left inside a wide berth, which is pretty sensible. Hopefully we can drop Grigo now, because we are firmly within the slippers of Avas. Looks like CLA Jats has some sort of issue because the Polish driver is, is right um, on his gearbox. In fact, they may fight going into Turn 2, which would be superb news for myself and Savevas. Let's see. Polish driver kind of pops out, thinks against it. Is he going to go last minute? No, he doesn't. But maybe CLA Jats has burnt some tyres. They were making moves early on in the race. And those moves might be coming home to roost. But yeah, PA at the moment, which would be okay points, but I think we can do better. I think we can do better in these last two and a half laps. And there they go, they're fighting side by side. That's going to be the key to Savevas, who gets a lot of spaz on the exit. Unfortunately, we're not right in the mix, but not necessarily a bad thing, because we can kind of pick our lines. We've got enough space to do that. Savevas and Cedar Jacks going side by side, leaving to the space, very nice. And here we go. Unfortunately, I get a little bit of understeer there, which means I delay getting the power. I've actually brought Grigo back into it. He's probably going to bring the Russian as well. So the last two laps are going to be looking quite intense. Um, <laughs> a big battle for fifth, potentially even a six-car battle. The Polish driver has now got his way through and is trying to eke out a gap. I imagine the lap times now are getting significantly slower. Let's see. 24.8. Someone fairly recently has done 22.0, but they may have put on the medium size of lols. People getting strats on the exit at turn one. I've got a good run here on CLA Jacks. Let's see what happens. And there's penalties. Ooh. Very, very tasty. And uh, I'm coming for a long way back, but I'm just going to slide it up the inside. It's a move I like to do. It's a move I feel confident doing. I leave the space in the exit. Um, and it's fine leaving space in the exit there. Leave, leave room to race because... You're going to have the inside here. Ooh, I thought there's another car ghost. So that's just um, someone loitering. But we did get past Savevas. We got past Savevas. We got past Cile Jax. So we're back up to P6. And the Polish driver we've already seen um, spin, actually. Having a full-on spin. Which may well have impacted their tyres. So could we potentially get a P5 here? You can look at the radar and see there's an absolute queue of cards. It just seems to be... That queue behind me seems to be getting bigger. Like, um, we're falling back into the midfield. There are a lot of cars there. It's going to be the last lap. So it's going to come down to two things. Not making mistakes in terms of spins. And not getting track limits. That's going to be it, really. So Vevas, four tenths behind. If they keep at that range, they will be very close down the straight into turn two. Just looking behind to check if anyone got a penalty. No, they haven't. This is kind of bad news for us. When you lose the momentum at Red Bull Ring, you can lose a lot of positions at once. So I was a bit concerned. But uh, we look behind there and Savevas is well off the racing line. So I'm kind of thinking, hmm, that might be a penalty. Let's double check. And there we go. There's the penalty. So uh, that's good news for us. It releases some of the pressure. As we just have to not bin it now. Senna too fast is absolutely miles ahead. So they've dominated the split. But we're on the P6... And if anything happens again, we'll, we'll pick up P5. These are pretty, pretty, pretty big points for us, if we're honest. Um, anything above 200 points is still a big points for us. I think my record is whatever we got after the PG Motorsport debacle. It's a good haul for us at Monza. But for a track that I'm nowhere near as good at as Monza, because Monza is my favourite track, Red Bull Ring, I often struggle. This would really be a superb result. So just a few corners to go to not pleb it. 
We've got the Russian behind, but he's a second behind, so that's too far to dive from into the last corner. Which is always a heart and mouth moment. And we're looking good, I have to say. Can we just hang it around the penultimate corner? Here we go. Taking it very gentle now. Absolutely do not want to get a track limit. If we get a track limit here, it will be doubled. So if we were to get a second, that would um, lose us at least one position, maybe more. And there we go. It's going to be a P6. It's going to be a P6 for us. Let's take a look at the points. And there we go. 217 points. 217 points. Quite a good haul for us. And uh, we're getting closer to kind of challenging for 250 more often, which I'm very excited about. Let's try and do that, everyone. Let's try and challenge for 250 points. And then dare I say it, we can we can start to aim at um, aim at the 300 points. But I hope you enjoyed that race. A very strategic tactical and very, very respectful, I thought. At a track that is famous for um, kind of punts, especially into Turn 1, Turn 2. And uh, hashtag ban PGM is properly moving now properly moving so feel free to jump aboard the movement if you've um seen what pg most what does in terms of ruining other people's races looks like grigo spanned on the last lap and dropped all the way back which is absolute pain but yeah i hope you enjoyed this video thank you so much for joining and i'll see you all next time